Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage Alexis Moore Edding! I'm a people pleaser. I avoid conflict. I like easy situations. And this worked out really well for me. My first sexual partner was in high school. I'd been dating him for three months, and we started having sex, and it was so great. We both came like rapid fire, and it was like, yeah, we're both satisfied, this is great, it's easy. And we kept going at it for a couple years. And one time, we went at it 12 times in a 24-hour period. And I say 12 times, I mean that he came 12 times, which means I probably came somewhere between 18 and 25 times in a 24-hour period. So life was seeming pretty good, but then I got to college, and I was a little more not so easily pleased by the men that I was engaged with, or rather, they were not so easily pleased by me. I was confused. Why was sex more complicated all of a sudden? Isn't it just pretty easy? Like, you have sex and you both come? It's not. So I'm a little confused, and I don't feel comfortable voicing this conflict that I have about it with my partners. And some of them are impressed by the fact that I can come easily and make this a sport. Um, and they think, well, how many times can I make her come? And I'm like, well, okay, this is kind of fun, but then I get tired. And because I'm a people pleaser, if I'm tired, that means I can't actually please them anymore because I just want to go to sleep. And so that's frustrating for me. I have this conflict about, well, I want to please you, but I can't because you made me tired. And, and I like orgasming. I like orgasming a lot. Don't get me wrong. Um, but sometimes when you get like past five, it's kind of like, all right, well, what, what are we doing next? Oh, more. All right. So I'm living through life with this people-pleasing attitude and fear of conflict. And it, it's starting to show up not just in my sex life, but in my personal life. Uh, I drive friends across town at uh, rush hour because we hung out longer than I thought and then they couldn't take the bus and I'd rather be doing a project but I drive them across town anyway or this one time my um, ex-boyfriend he uh, needed bus fare in order to get to my house and he asked me if I'd pay him back because he needed the money for uh, his laundry and I didn't want to have that conflict with him about money management or anything like that, so I, I paid him back, which is not really what I want to be having happen. Um, I'm not valuing myself at that point, um, and I'm struggling with this people-pleasing and my own pleasure and my own value of life and which is more important and how do I, how do I manage that? Um, so as I go through life, I'm thinking about, well, how am, I gonna, how am I gonna change this about myself? I'm in sexual situations where guys want, ask me to give them a blowjob, and I'm like, oh, I have a really bad gag reflex, and we don't know each other quite well enough for me to be like, oh, I'm willing to gag for you. Um, <laughs> so sometimes I'm like, all right, would it be easier just to gag, or do I actually just you know, say no? But I, I'm a people pleaser, so I'm like, all right, well, I'm fear of that conflict. What's the conversation gonna be if I say no, I don't really wanna give you a blowjob? That's awkward. So I just go for it and suffer the consequences. Um, I'm on a date with this guy. It's one of our first dates. Um, it is our first date. And he seems nice enough. I met him online, and, you know, he's not everything that I dream of in a man. He has these watery gray eyes that kind of remind me of my mother, which doesn't, <laughs> doesn't really bode well for him. But, uh, you know, I'm just like, okay, you're cute, and I was, you know, hoping to get laid tonight. So this is nice. We have dinner, um, and uh, he pays, which is kind of nice. Um, and then we're talking about what's going to happen next, and I'm like, well, um, where are we gonna go? I have roommates. He's like, I live by myself, I have my own place. It's out in Gresham. And I'm like, oh, um, that's kind of far away, isn't it? He's like, yeah, it's like 20 minutes. I'm like, oh, well, it's getting kind of late. And my bedtime's like at 10.30, 11, and it's like 10, 10. And I'm like, well, we're gonna drive out to Gresham. And I'm like, ah. Oh. And we're not gonna carpool because then he'd have to drive me out there and then drive me back. And unlike me, he's obviously not a people pleaser that way. So. I'm drive we're gonna carry van caravan. So I'm driving out there and I'm like, all right, this is gonna work out, I'm gonna be okay. But then, you know, I get to like exit six and I'm like, oh, all right, I got, I got a ways to go and I'm not feeling it anymore. I'm no longer getting that like desire to orgasm. I'd rather go home and go to bed. But I've already agreed to this. So we're driving and I get there and I see him and I'm like, all right, he's, he's man pheromones. I'm, I'm here, all right, I'm ready. 
I'm ready, I'm ready. And so we're, we're on the couch, and things are kind of heating up, and there's hand touching, and, and I'm kind of like, all right, and there's kissing, and then there's laying down on the bed, and it gets kind of more exciting, and I'm on bottom, and he's on top, and we're, we're going at it, kind of rolling around and rubbing, and no clothes have come off yet, mind you, and we're rubbing, and we're rubbing, and we're rubbing, and I, boom, I come. I'm, I've, I, this is not a, phenom a new thing for me, but I was just like, okay, usually I want more after this, but I'm not fully attracted to this guy in that like, way that I really want more at this point. And I'm feeling kind of tired, and I, I'm not sure how long it's gonna take him to get off, and he's definitely not the kind of man that I want to give a blowjob to, and I feel like that's gonna be the easiest way to get out of this situation. So I'm laying there looking at him, thinking, all right, can I get out of this situation elegantly, or can I get out at all, or do I have to stay? Because my people pleaser side is like, you gotta stay, you, got, you, you agreed to this, like, you're here, the, you know, you said you're gonna come over, we're gonna have sex, in your head, you agreed to this, and that means that he's gonna get off, because that's what happens. But I've already gotten off, and that's what I wanted out of the situation. Um, so, what happens if I leave? Like, is, he's gonna feel really bad. It doesn't, it doesn't reflect well on me. I feel like I'm a bad person if I do that. Um, but I'm also like, but I'd really just rather be driving home right now. I still have 30 minutes to get home after this and I'm tired. And I'm just in this battle between my head and my heart. And my head's like, it's okay if you like do the thing that would make you feel better in this situation. And my heart's like, no, but I, I would make me a bad person. I can't, I can't say no to this guy when we've gone this far. So having this battle as we're making out. I'm like, would I feel worse if I went home right now, or would I feel worse if I stayed here and had sex with this guy? And suddenly I had these two options, and I'm like, I can actually go home right now? This would be, this is a viable option? And so I look at him and I say, you know what, I think I'm good. <laughs> and he looks at me and he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I, I think I gotta go home. And he gets like really, angry in his eyes, and I'm like, okay, well, I was feeling bad about this decision, but now I think I might feel better about it, because you've given me, like, this negative input, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be okay with leaving now, so I put on my purse and my shoes, and, and I go home, and I'm driving home in the car, and I'm still having this battle about, all right, I'm women power, I'm, that, was, that was great, right? Um, but at the same time, I'm still feeling bad about it, so I'm having this battle about pleasing people, and valuing myself. And I would like to be able to stand here and say, you know, I feel really great about my decisions in life, and I am now able to put myself first. Um, but I'm still dealing with the head and heart conflict.